do you do you guys how know how is US dollar value? Like you no, know, how how do they decide what is the value of US dollar? Do it, guys... It's it's free floated, so it's it's traded yeah. among all the currencies. So if a lot of people, for example, holding pounds, start selling their the US dollar holdings and buying pounds, so it's called a currency pair. So this they will so they will sell the US dollar and get pounds. Pounds will go in value. US dollar go down. So so imagine just billions of uh, 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 different transactions Michael happening at the same time. Yeah, uh, at the exchange. But the thing you have to understand about currencies is that there is no fixed uh, market. There's no fixed exchange. So for example, if you open a brokerage account, uh, for example with TD Ameritrade, and you open a brokerage account, say with Chow Swap, and then you look at the Euro USD. The, the, the exchange rate is going to be different. It's not like uh, it's not like uh, Apple stock because Apple stock is all listed on US stock exchange. So there's only one exchange in the world that's set mm-hmm. by you have. If you want to buy or sell Apple stock, you have to go to New York stock exchange, right? Or, or is Get it Nasdaq or one of one of the two? Mm-hmm. But but uh, currency exchanges there's no fixed currency exchange. So the, everybody is kind of operating all little currency exchange. All so everybody world. is actually sort of guessing, you know, so that they don't lose so much money when they actually you know, yeah. do, this, do this kind of exchange. No, right? the, so like, then what comes into play is uh, what's called an arbitration trader. Somebody that says, hey, this guy's uh, exchange rate is, is so much and this guy's exchange rate is much higher. I will sell I will sell this guy and buy this guy and I make money that way. So there are people with computers that do this kind of. So these are the FX traders, right? These are the, yeah, the guys that are arbitration too, traders. These, these are the guys yeah. that are too lazy to put on a suit and go and bet at the horse races, so they do stock trading. Yeah, trading. no, I mean, uh, I mean, if you look at uh, what's it called? Yeah, 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 yeah. That Uni- Uniper, Uniper is a good example. Uniper is this gigantic European company. They're listed in three exchanges. They're listed in the US, New York Stock Exchange. They're listed in London and listed in Amsterdam. So if you try to buy one stock of uh, 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 Uniper in the US, it costs about fifty US dollars. You buy, you try to buy one stock of Uniper in London Stock Exchange, it costs four thousand pounds. How does that make sense? It, you know, <laughs> it 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 is it's just you know they are not interchangeable. You you still get so when you buy fifty dollars of Uniper in the US, you're getting fifty dollars worth of Uniper, and you buy four thousand pounds of uh, uh, Uniper in the London Stock Exchange, you're getting four thousand pounds worth of Uniper. But one Uniper stock in London is not the same as one Uniper stock. And if you look at uh, on a daily basis, for example, uh, they will kind of go up together, but not really, because maybe the, the one in London might go up 1.3%, and then the one in the US might go up 1.2%. And then, you know, so there'll be a spread there. And then the arbitration, uh, the arbitrage traders will come in and push the values back again, you know, like because they, they will have an account in London and an account. New York, and then they would sell the the one that's priced higher and buy the one that's priced lower. Yeah, that's, as I understand so it, just it currencies. Drew, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, but arbitrage is quite safe because you know your margin yeah. before you do the trade. But you've got to be exactly. very good to do arbitrage. Like Warren Buffett, uh, you need arbitrage a is great, but. Well, but you also need to know what you're doing, like, and you need good access yeah. to information. Warren Buffett says it's the hardest thing to do, but it's actually quite safe because the the margin is locked in ahead of time. You're not really yeah. speculating. You're but you see, advantage. everybody knows this. Everybody knows mm. this. So the, the ones well, that do it are the ones that rent. Uh, they literally rent a, a fiber wire from the New York Stock Exchange mm. to the building next door. So the rents <laughs> around the, the 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 exchange are actually there. So it's a split second difference. The guy. Mm. In, in the in the next county isn't going to be able to do this because this guy that's sitting right beside the New York Stock Exchange gets to make the money first. Once they see this tiny change, it could be one cent. They'll just they, they, they'll do that they'll do that trade already. And you know, it, so, so it, which is why CBD is like all no, no human does it. it it's all so programmed it, and, and run by So this is why CBD is all very expensive, right? All the uh, no, that, that doesn't really history. happen in Singapore. <laughs> Singapore's too small. It, it, I don't think anybody bothers with, with the Singapore market. Yeah, no, because you need you need really big volumes, right? Because if you're only yes, making a one cent spread, yeah. you want to be buying a hundred million of the thing, so you get a hundred million and, one and then cents, you get a million, which yeah, is exactly. a million. Right? A, a yeah, CBD. Exactly. What is a CBD? Central, Central Business, Business District. District. Okay. okay. Yeah. Please elaborate. Or elucidate something. Yeah, it, it's, it's like your 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 the the, the, part of all, the banks where all the businesses are where all the high rises are, all the all it, the biggest banks are, all the financial, all the like, f- insurance. It's the center of banks. it's the center of the city. 
yeah, yeah. The center of the city mm-hmm. where, where like the business part of the city like downtown yeah. or city center yeah like downtown yeah. Yeah. all right and how was that relevant to Singapore in, uh, in this case? Like, it didn't work in Singapore because too small. Like, I don't really see that, that necessarily, oh, like, um, the high rises. And... So, so, not, so I was talking about the fiber, right? Yeah, I was talking okay. about renting a, a, a building beside the New York Stock Exchange so that you can get at the trade faster than somebody else. So because they get the information faster and they, get, and they put in the trade faster. So, okay, so, so it's uh, like a, a big yeah. stock hub or a trading hub, basically. A CBD is like a like the whole infrastructure is set up like physically and and uh, organized in a way where, like you said, you just it, it, plug it in yeah. and you're it's, trading even that much faster. No, it, it's yeah, where maybe, all your maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's where all your high rise finance buildings are, are located. Where where all the uh, yeah. yeah. So like so because yeah. I was just and you no know, just thinking you know if if the idea that you know the the cable is shorter. So the internet, you can reach your information faster, so you can trade faster. Then is that why you know all the commercial buildings around the central business districts all around the world is so expensive? You know, so so it's just off topic, off topic. I want to go back to bricks. You know, I want to go back to bricks. So <coughs> I, I just read a little bit about the bricks. So they are going to. So the plan is actually to do a basket of currency, but they there is no details about how this basket of currency is going to work for this new currency. It, they, it's literally just a new currency. So you know, with some kind of basket of currency, you no, know, as a reference, and there is also rumors that it's going to be related to gold, and uh, there is a lot of gold between BRICS, especially India, Russia, and China to combine is stupid amount of gold. So, so in, in, I kind of want to ask, you know, a, or maybe suggest, could it be a possibility where each of these BRICS country contribute a percentage in terms of? Uh, gold or something and the of course you're not going to tell what is the real you know backing you know, of the value of this currency but they they will just let the, let this currency be free floating so they can just they can trade their own national currency towards this BRICS uh, currency and then they they just let it free float but there is certain kind of backing to it and uh, hopefully yeah. with enough circulation then it doesn't need any backing in terms of gold and then no, you China will, you and will India but you're right. It could be. I mean, they could have an agreement among themselves. Okay, if 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 the pack is off by one percent, like maybe China needs to contribute twenty percent, India needs to contribute twenty percent, Russia twenty percent, and everybody contributes their foreign reserves to push the pack back up to to to. Do go, you still need the to pack go. if it's free floating? It's free floating. It's, uh, it's if it's free floating, then it, because it needs to be tied to the local currencies, right? I mean, it can't free but, float I mean, against. The, uh, that I mean, what's, what's because the point it's of this replace US dollar because US dollar is not packed to any currency, right? This is what I'm trying to say. Like countries are packed to US dollar. Yeah, the US, dollar, US dollar don't pack to anyone. Yeah, 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 which is why they, they which, but they, you see, they you US dollar US can print money. Nobody can yeah. print BRICS dollars in the in the sense. Yeah. Unless you no, know, have all five countries agreeing to print, right? So, which is why it's a separate alternative that works better. You know, this is why I'm, I'm saying yeah. that. So, and, so the and, local and, currencies need to be tied, need to be tied to this yeah. currency. and then for, for it to for make trust, sense. For trust, and for trust, they will back it with certain level of gold with all the five countries, though know, contributing could certain it, level of wealth to it, to, to it back be, it and then let it free float. It's possible. It's possible. I have, I have a. Uh, it needs to be tied to each currency, like well, so. Have it will free float against outside. Against you know, currencies as outside the price. That, 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 that don't, don't make sense to me. Then that it will be just a situation of uh like waiting for something bad to happen. Because well then, remember what we're talking about. We're talking about BRICS, right? Brazil, Russia, India, China. I mean, if all these guys can get stable economies and stop having like financial crises and the rest of it, that's a beautiful idea. Godspeed to them. But the, well, the idea that the international you know corporate were, community is going to jump into that bed, I mean, they might. You know how they were talking to add Saudi Arabia to BRICS as well? So maybe that could play a, a bigger role as to it It may not just be backed by um, gold. It may also be backed by petrol. So that's, which that's is, another which aspect. Is basically, you, that's my point. You, know, you, you don't have to pack it at all. It will be free floating because the moment you have enough people using it, enough circulation, you don't need to pack it to anything because it's packed to everything. Because when you and, trade with it, it's packed to everything. Just like US dollar, it's packed to everything. 
I would like to bring up one more thing that, so India and China are one of the biggest consumers on the planet of resources. So if just these two countries stop trading in US dollars completely, you have a huge chunk of, um, huge chunk of trade that's happening in, not in US dollars. U US is going to lose a bunch of money if just China stops using US dollar completely. But uh, would they necessarily stop completely? Because I would like the whole idea of having foreign currency exchanges, like the dollar is not going to crash as far as I get it. This is going to be like a fairly slow movement. Sure. And this is not going to happen anytime soon as far as I got uh, Sergey Lavrov was uh, recently in uh, Kenya, I think it was. He was saying that they're going to have a meeting in August to uh, to discuss the, uh, the BRICS uh, thingy. But like once the BRICS is, uh, and we have a reserve currency, let's hypothetically go on here. Why would they necessarily want to drop the dollar at the same time? Like why won't they have both of them so they can trade with the Western world as uh, they do, and then they can keep the BRICS for the their sphere. That's thing. what I was talking about. So, That's exactly so, so, what I think. Yeah. So this is the two scenarios I was talking about earlier. The 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 the, the less uh, uh, oppositional scenario where they let the BRICS reserve currency kind of. Uh, be more convenient so everybody starts deciding to use it. So you'll be a slow decline of the dollar as people pick up the bricks. The other, like the the other scenario right? is if they try to force it. So OPEC Plus comes out and says we'll only sell uh, in now in the new currency and we're no longer selling in US dollar. Everybody will at the same time dump the US dollar to buy this new reserve currency. That's where you have a sudden overnight crash of the US dollar. Yeah. So it's yes, but hang on. Like, I'll, I'll, we don't expect that's, an that's where Toby's point right comes in. That's where Toby's point comes in. So that the second option is just unviable because then US is no, they, they, it's going everything is going to be unaffordable. The US is going to bring their navy back home. Uh, the the pirates are back in the seats. It brings us to the yeah. same point. Well, it's oh, not just okay. that. Also, okay. hang on. I, I, I want to make another point here, and that is that let's not assume that the US currency losing a lot of value is entirely negative. There are a lot of countries that deliberately devalue their currency, right? Because if you've got a devalued currency, all of your labor costs become cheaper. There are people who suggest that what the US really needs to restart its industrial manufacturing base is cheaper cheaper labor, right? Yeah. Because they have uh, the resources yeah. internally. Just yeah, so. Yeah. If you, if you have like Russia and the BRICS, let's just say they create this wonderful new system and their currencies become really valuable. They're going to have, if, if, they're, if, they're, if their industrial base, if the major cost line item is labor, they've killed themselves, right? Because all of their domestic no. companies that are so productive have now got massive increased costs because they're, they're, the wages are what they are and the currency yeah. is more valuable. They, That's they, they're point. not because their currencies are more valuable. They're not getting as much of it per unit that they yeah. sell, yeah. but they're paying the same labor costs. So a lot of countries deliberately devalue their currency for the sake of economic right. growth. Right. So it's yeah, not necessarily yeah. the you know the the US dollar losing value isn't necessarily a bad thing. Which is why it, it, it cannot be a pack. It can't be a pack. No, no. If you pack, it's a pack, then they they would they would just destroy themselves. It, no, it, it has to be a separate currency on its own. Like a so, US so dollar. Toby is, Toby is only right to a certain extent and a very limited extent. So when a country talks about devaluing its own currency, it's a controlled devaluation. What here? What we're talking about is is US dollar going to hyperinflation? Uncontrolled. So what, yeah. yeah, uncontrolled devaluation. And this is this is what happened in in uh, in, in uh, is, is what happened Zimbabwe. in Venezuela, you know, Zimbabwe. It is basically why 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 would this happen? It is Okay, let's take the, 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 the scenario where OPEC plus decides, okay, we're only going to sell in, uh, in, 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 US, uh, in, in the BRICS reserve currency, we're not going to use the US dollar. So everybody around the world doesn't need US dollar kind of anymore. Some of us will still hold, but they will be forced to sell some US dollars to get this new reserve currency. So overnight, the, the value of the US dollar comes down. Sure, their imports are cheaper now, but they, conversely, they cannot import stuff anymore. It's very expensive for them to import stuff. So, it, and when they, when it, when it gets to, and it gets to a point where if it's very expensive to import things, and then the U.S. government, uh, how how can it then uh, get money? Because you must understand the U.S. government is in a huge deficit. So, how can they get money there now to go and buy more things when when the stuff they sell now is is much uh, cheaper because there's a low you know, the well, trust I can answer the that. Person. I can answer that question if you like. You see, the U.S. the the people in the U.S. who pay tax, they don't just own things in U.S. dollars. 
Gazpro. Oh. He 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 oh. he hanged. Yeah, he he said something okay. wrong. No, no, like U.S. dollar sanctioned him. A U.S. sanctioned okay. him. Okay. No, no, I, I, I want to add. If anybody yeah, is sanctioned as me. <laughs> I want to add a simple analogy to you know in, in terms of the viewers don't really understand you know the the situation of how when you have a currency that nobody wants how scary it is just imagine you know I, i'm sure many of you guys all go to holidays right you go on holiday you exchange currency you bring then after that, you sure have some currency you you cannot finish then you bring home and you realize this stupid currency is stuck it's stuck. You, you can't do anything with it you can't buy anything you go to the exchange the exchange don't want the money, especially if you, especially I the actually money experience is that it's difficult. You, you can, the only way you can actually get it out again is by using that uh, holiday money and then you use it to buy dollars and that's going to cost you a whole lot more. So I, I experienced, for example, <laughs> I can send money to Ghana fairly easy because uh, the Norwegian crown, for some reason, it's, it's fairly cheap to kind of convert that to the dollar. But if I were to be taking money from Ghana to Norway, that's a completely different thing. Like it's a whole lot more expensive. Like you might as well just keep the, the money there really so uh, yeah. yeah so I, it's just for the viewers to kind of understand how how, how currency works and and yeah. when you when you yourself as a person you know let's say, let's say i go to china i brought back the the renminbi the yuan oh my freaking god this is mm -hmm. just waste paper by for me now you know for for good until i go back to china because you can't even use it outside of china at all nobody wants it it's a unwanted money so I just like it. I go to Myanmar, Every time. I mean, I, unless you go to China, you see, that's the point. Which is why when, if nobody wants to trade in US dollars, then you're going to have a problem because then look, everybody just have a lot of US dollars that they do not know what to do with. And there's nothing to buy because US don't really sell much things. People will still, yeah, people will still trade in US dollars, but I, I, yeah, they it's, will trade. it's more of a... Your goods will be limited, right? You. Yeah, yeah, it'll be limited. Limited. And so yeah, yeah. So it's it's a bit like you know, I get Mal Malaysian ringgit. You no, know, I'm in Singapore. Malaysia is just next door. Um, I I I can still buy certain I mean, things. Shadow battle. No, I can't buy anything. Saying something wrong. I've been cancelled, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? Why do you say bad things about United States? No, you see, you are. No, he was defending the United States. He was defending. Oh, really? I was the one oh, saying sorry. bad things. China oh, it must be China. China is no, China. banning Toby. There's oh. some Chinese agent. Here. I think it's Russia. No, everything is Russia. Uh, Russia is banning Toby. Yes. So did My... I make the point that uh, that that you know like no. the, the U.S. is still going to have tax revenue from all the countries? In these suddenly rich places like Brazil and Russia and Saudi Arabia, because U.S. No, tax, no, payments, tax these multinational, because the multinational corporations that own the assets in those companies pay tax in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And not only do they pay tax in the U.S., they repatriate a huge amount of money to the U.S. in the form of insurance, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, so the, the the corporate economy, right, that the U.S. owns, they actually they're very diverse. They own everything everywhere. I mean, you're talking Vanguard and BlackRock, right? Vanguard and BlackRock aren't going to lose all their assets because the bricks get mm -hmm. dragged together and create a stable set of currencies. So arguably the corporate world could watch the American currency go into the toilet and cheer because it means they're going to have cheap labor costs in America. They could rebuild the industrial capacity of America and they're still going to own everything everywhere else. Yeah, and unless America. unless the BRICS actually nationalize all their assets yeah. that are held by the international <laughs> corporate community, yeah, they're, they're the making, all they're really good. doing is creating wealth for the same people who own it already. Yeah, so but the I regular American is going to have a horrible time. Imagine you're making fifty thousand mm -hmm. US dollars today, and in 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 a year's they already in are a, in, in, a, in in a year's yeah. time, their fifty thousand US dollars can't even buy a, a car. In, a, in 10 years' time, the $50,000 can't buy a banana. Yeah, but they'll, have, they'll they... be much happier when they do get a banana. So there's that. <laughs> Aki, what do you want to say, Aki? Sure, well, but, you know, in my, in, my opinion, in, in my opinion, the second hypothetical scenario that we just talked about, it is um, not impossible, but it's, it's very inconceivable because... Um, First thing, U.S. won't let that happen. Secondly, it's not just U.S. that will have to stop trading in U.S. dollars. That's a uh, first of all, U.S. can impose um, the same things that oh, we're not going to give you, we're not going to sell anything unless it's in U.S. dollar. U.S. can do the same thing that Russia just did. Then it's not just U.S. It's other allies that will have to stop trading in U.S. dollars, which they will not do. So the the second. Um, uh, oh, third thing, then there's IMF. There's all of the loans that, that U.S. and uh, 
these allied countries has, have given out that need to be paid back in US dollars. So um, the, the hyperinflation or the, the, the sudden devaluation of US dollar, in my opinion, it, it is not possible. Um, it, but the first scenario, I think first scenario is more conceivable that it could happen, that there could be an introduction of another strong currency, but there cannot be a, such a strong replacement that US dollar just completely is almost stopped being used exactly i am glad you mentioned uh, i'm glad you mentioned the uh, imf because I, I wanted to ask some questions there maybe this should be a, a whole stream by itself because it's a big institution but as far as i get it the loans that are Hmm? <laughs> I can cut. You know, they can be a separate stream. <laughs> sure, sure. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. What, uh, no. but, but what I was going to try to ask was that because as far as I've understood it, uh, most of the debts that go through the IMF are done in dollars. And the and it's uh, China also issues uh, loans through the IMF. And as far as I understand it, that is also in dollars. So like what are like uh, some implications we can expect if uh, BRICS is, uh, uh, arises and like, how will the IMF necessarily react? Would it say, like, no, it's going to be dollars only, or they will just simply diversify and say, well, you can get your loan in a dollar, or you can get it in the BRICS currency, for example? Yeah, I, don't know. I think I, I think maybe the latter one. But, of course, uh, in the beginning, I'm quite sure they will be defensive. They will be defending and, you know, try to block, like, any any organization that will try to protect their own interests. But no, you can't defeat BRICS. You know, you, even you go to war, you can't really defeat BRICS. BRICS right, countries are I, countries that you never right, lost. Right, because I also I also imagine it because that the, if once that happens, if the IMF, for example, says <clears throat> no way, you're not trading, you're not getting loans through BRICS currency, you're only getting through USD. The BRICS countries mm -hmm. couldn't they then also then establish an organization akin to IMF, you, except instead already, of dollar, they already have. Yeah, they, they have, they already they already have, have. Yeah. you have a SEO, China, right? China, China right now yeah. has lent. I think about right now outstanding loans to the rest of the world is about six hundred billion, and like to all uh, to like, and, and they're not through IMF. They're directly, yeah. they're directly yeah, right. They're not through IMF. Just go to China yeah. and take a loan, or go to Russia. And they, and they, I mean, IMF is just a lot one of institution. Because you still have the there's true Belt and Roads. Then you still have the Shanghai Cooperative Organization. You no, know, they they can create all these kind of instrument instantly because once you have. Such a powerful grouping of countries, especially if you get Saudi Arabia on board. Oh my God! Then the do you see the whole shebang? Everybody will go because Venezuela even, is wanting to join. Then and even so Iran. You, yeah, Iran, Iran Venezuela, Turkey, Iran, well, let's, Venezuela. Let's, is, is let's a remember really they are very powerful oil producing country as well. So the, the IMF is basically like a repo man for the banks, right? Yeah. So yeah. The, it's, no, it's a it's, bank. They, it's a bank too. It's basically just yeah, a bank. Yeah. But it yeah. deals it with bad loans. It, it, it deals with problem countries on behalf of the dominant banks. So, yeah, yeah. if there's going to be like a new block, they're going to have to have their own repo, I, man. I they're going to create their good, own IMF. A yeah. good analogy is they are the international uh, loan. So only hmm. when you have no choice that you borrow money from them. <laughs> so, you know, it's just like, no, where normal people, you, know, they, you have no money and the banks don't want to loan you money, your friends don't want to loan you money, family don't want to loan you money. That's the people you go, no, the loan sharks. So yeah, and I Ukraine, think. Ukraine just applied for a <laughs> loan. So <laughs> they're going to loan sharks. Yeah. So so, so that's what they look to me like. You know, the World Bank, the IMF, they just look like loan sharks to me because they'll give yeah. you very uncertain, yeah. uncertain and, and this, no I good think terms. To, to uh, sorry for interjecting, I think this pertains actually very much to the de-dollarization geopolitically speaking because uh, now that the IMF is not the only lender, uh, and I mean it's not the only lender right now. Uh, we see in Africa the only loan shark. Right, sure, but in, oh, in like oh, in Africa, no. there's a, a lot of there's <laughs> no, a lot no, of loans no. that are going in there right from China to Africa. And they, uh, I don't know, they, you can consider it a PR stunt, but not only had the Chinese forgiven, I think it was like up to 19 no loans, I'm going off memory, right? And this is like, the West never does something like that. The interest rate, as far as I get it, is like a third or a half of what the West uh, provides. So it's obviously yeah, a much, much better, but much, much yeah. better loan to be getting there, right? And so yeah. like this shift, like I, I kind of get the impression that this shift is already occurring, but uh, w yeah. would we, can we expect like, this really fast tracking once the BRICS currency is uh, created. So let's take uh, uh, Ghana as an example. It's, it's very tied to the US dollar, very tied to the US I, dollar, has a lot of loans for, through IMF yeah. and so forth. Like, would they perhaps want to, as a means to kind of get out of their debt trap, get a debt from BRICS in order to pay out the IMF and then deal with the, okay. because they had yeah, a better no, I think one, one misconception we have to uh, move, step away from is, is this idea that these Chinese loans are from China. It's not. 
it, it's basically this this country says, okay, I want to build a road or I want to build an airport, and then I want to lend some money. Then they they will have a bid, and different different banks will come. Maybe the World Bank will come. Maybe the Asian Development Bank will come. Maybe the Chinese some Chinese banks, not China. China doesn't have a bank. It's like it could be a state owned bank. You know, but there are several banks in China. I mean, for the same bid, you can have three different Chinese banks that are bidding and offering different terms for different loans. So the guys. As I understand it, each, each region has its own pretty much independent bank and finance. No, there are a few large ones like the 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 the, 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 the okay, I forget their names. The, the, but I think yeah. they have a lot of yeah. banks in China. Like, yeah, yeah, the point is well, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like, so it, it's not a China uh, loan. It's a Chinese bank loan. So it's a commercial loan. Facilitated by the government. Well, right? no. But let's not forget. The government. That, yes, yes. Let's not forget that the Western banks might be really quite pleased to let China and the BRICS take on this customer demographic. It's like, China yeah, is sure. Money. You can lend to all those folks who are not going to pay you back. But it's yeah, like, you know, China's we, right. because you China want to be playing the long game. So, right, yeah. so you, you see what, what the Chinese government is doing here. They, they don't uh, expect... Uh, Okay, when, when China lends, uh, again, I'm using the terminology, when China lends uh, through one of its banks to an African country to build an airport, it doesn't give them the money. Most of the money is, it, it, so what it says is, okay, this airport, to build it, and we think it's going to cost a billion dollars, right? You're going to need 500 million in materials, 500 million in labor. We're going to lend you a billion dollars in Chinese yuan, then... We're going to provide 500 million in labor and 500 million materials. The money doesn't yeah. actually go. So yeah. China will send its workers. So the bank will go hire a bunch of Chinese people. And, and they will buy their own materials. Your materials. Mm -hmm. They will That's build it. the yeah. airport for them and then say, there you have the airport. Now you owe me a billion dollars. Correct. Right? So there's, there's, it's like there's, stimulating there's, the domestic economy. Exactly. Yeah. Because China's uh, construction <laughs> industry is, is suffering a, a lot because they overbuilt. So now the, it's the like Chinese it's like with right? Ukraine. Know, it's like with Ukraine, to... right? America's yeah, giving forty billion dollars to Ukraine. They're not. The money's never yeah, going there. Exactly. Yeah. I have a lot of yeah. leftover uh, machines that are lying around. There's not so, doing anything. So might so as well people... send them to Africa to build an airport. I might not get the money back, but hey, you know, I have to pay okay. for this anyway. They are my citizens, yeah. not the riot. So it's it's a win-win for China in that sense. They're not actually so, well, paying out. It's, it's, it's kind of losing less. Is what it is. So and this it, is actually exactly, it's, it's losing so, less. So depending on the person. So if you lose, if you lose less for long enough, right, you lose. So it's, yeah. it's yeah. not exactly. Yeah, yeah. but they are right. getting they are getting paid over time for much of their loans. Most of their loans, ninety over percent, are performing. So there are some loans yeah. that are not performing. So uh, like 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 coping thing said. They, they sometimes they realize they're never going to pay. So they, they forgive the debt and what they get back is, is a huge like PR. Like, you know, the people mm. in the country are going to go, oh, China is great. You know, let's take another loan from China. You know, yeah. so it, 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 it builds... Yeah, they're exchanging financial capital for political capital in a sense. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, for, for and, and not just capital. that. Yeah. So, so de depending on the perspective, you know, some of the pro, uh, more Western and anti-Chinese uh, kind of perspective is that this is a debt trap. Basically, you know, it's like, hey, do you like a, do you like a Ferrari? I buy you a Ferrari, then you owe me the Ferrari money. But actually, I built the Ferrari. Maybe I own the Ferrari. You no, know, I, I just leave it in my garage. There's nothing I nothing to do with it. I just give it to you. I say, okay, now you owe me a, a price of a Ferrari. And you owe yeah. me, and you have to pay on top of that interest. So I make money out of the uh, something that oh, I there's a can stipulation. Use. There's a stipulation. If you don't pay me back the money on time, oh, I get the Ferrari money. back. Yeah, <laughs> which is why that is called right? a debt trap. You know? So, so yeah. that is brilliant in oh, terms yeah. of for China. Because it, it kind of bites into the greed of the, the politicians from all these countries, which is why it's a trap. But, but, it, but if you can pay back, you know, and you make a good project, it works for everyone. Yeah, because, yeah, because the problem is... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, can the you, problem uh, is can when, you please explain a little bit how China does this? Like, cause you, let's say, all, all the ways you're explaining China doing it, like, how does that actually fundamentally change, differ from the West? Because uh, the only thing I see is that, okay, the West has 
uh, higher interest rates and also they tend to be having clauses where if you cannot because pay back, you not only will they take your assets but it will also restructure your economy domestic economy with austerity measures and so forth enabling your, your trade protections uh, so you cannot subsidize your local uh, industries and so these multinational companies which are subsidized by the wealthiest countries in the world they uh, in effect take over the country uh, economically at least so how yeah. but the china i don't get the impression that that's not the, the restructuring part yeah. is like completely absent in their loans a uh, right yeah it's yeah. different you're right from my point that's why from my that's why most of these countries that's why most of these countries prefer to take chinese loans because there is no there are no strings attached in the sense of political strings all the strings I, are financial strings i, 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 I disagree related to the loan itself there is no you know I would yes, I would disagree. I actually did a did a full project about it. Especially think look at uh, Pakistan and uh, Sri Lanka. They 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 took loans from uh, uh, China, but they, they ended up um, because of the debt trap that you guys are talking about. It's basically now they eventually have to give up other assets because they cannot pay their loans back properly or on time. Yeah, it, it's they. So, it, uh, uh, the, the, so, uh, let me let me uh, correct that. Pakistan, I'm not so sure. Uh, for Sri Lanka, uh, the Chi the loans that come from Chinese corporations amounted to less than 10% of all their front debt obligations. So you cannot just blame China for for for. They are one of the many many. Lenders well, well, yeah, 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 but 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 to to uh, give them a break on their loans, what what China is doing instead getting um, strategic positions. For example, they they they're like, okay, give us this um, uh, seashore or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. like where where ships are parked. So so they they're taking that. So they they uh, what West does yeah, they okay. they. They put their own influence. They 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 put their own own political sphere of influence. What what China does, it's it's strategic in a way that they they put their they, they don't uh, create an economic structure in the country. Instead, they create they start building their own economic structure. So now Pakistan has um, a, a lot of Chinese influence that they cannot break out of, and uh, at the same time, it's going to work in benefit of China. What yes. the West does, it doesn't really benefit so West. Ideally, you see the, 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 the difference. The difference here is okay. China, what China does, it, it, it looks, it, it works like a housing loan. So you buy a house, and then if you can't pay back, the bank takes the house. That's it. That's the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. They built uh, Sri Lanka a port. They couldn't pay, it, so China takes over the port. There is nothing else outside that business relationship. It, it's not like you owe me money for the port, therefore I take your airport. No, the, you know. Whereas the the the, the strings that the Western uh, countries have extend beyond the business relationship it goes in the political goes into the, diff the, the difference is that the west wants to kind of uh, enslave the country in a certain sense you, what china wanted is a bit different what china want is wanted is the infrastructure so that they can feed themselves whatever yeah. resources my food money oil so it's not that the china china will not loan you money just for anything they only loan you money or or funded your infrastructure project. That is what China also wanted. If so, you no, know, like for example, the Sri Lanka port, the China wanted the port. But they, of course, like I said, no countries operated on interest. They would just say, no, this port is so awesome. You know, if you build it, you no, know, all our fleets will come and park here. You earn a lot of money. Then and then the, the fleets never never come. And then they, they have a port that is useless. And then they can take nothing to sell. Yeah, they, which is they went organic, <laughs> which is kind of stupid. Also on the on Sri Lanka part stupid, because but, you know. they bite the they bite the bait because it's like you know yeah. these guys are the one loaning you money and at the same time you trust that they will give you money. You know you can wait for it's like long shark though. So 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 you no, know, but that is how it works. But it's a bit different because uh you, the Western side also don't loan money easily. You can loan money to do whatever you want. That's the difference. But then the thing is that uh, the whatever you want, very hard to get money because you cannot propose something that the, they will feel that it's safe enough to loan you the money. So, but there are dangers here because, like, if if you loan shark to a country and it and it turns out very badly for them, there's probably going to be very hostile sentiment towards you from the people. And yeah, if you don't yeah, have yeah, the but... marines, if you don't have the marines to arrive, right, as the yeah. West does to enforce your your claims, they might just tell you to go jump in a lake and then you've lost your money. And so this is why if China can't project power to protect its loans and interests, it might just find people told to get lost. Well, I've heard an argument that one of the reasons that China doesn't do the uh, the uh, restructuring and all the other austerity measures and stuff like that that the West tends to do is 
in large part because the West has already done so so extensively across most of the like be it Latin America or Africa, they've done so much that China really doesn't need to do so. And by like they 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 don't really have much to gain because the the, the workers have no bargaining power. They have no security nets or anything. All those. Uh, uh, policies that have kind of created the societies that they have it's already there right so like how much more are you going to restructure and and, uh, and like the uh, for example uh, western no. loans i find them to kind of off, uh, in some cases they seem to be actually unable to acquire more assets because they are dominating so firmly in the country and, and so, i want to add the belt and road projects right is all based on valuations that means it actually doesn't cost that much it's all just value second thing when China use China worker, they don't pay them in US dollars. They don't pay them in real money. They pay them in their own printed money, which I mentioned that nobody know how much money they printed. And it's no, a close that's not correct. Money. No, I, okay, we the can Chinese yen no. is like the Singapore dollar. If you print too much Chinese yen or you print too much Singapore dollar or like the ruble, you will go into hyperinflation. You, you, you can't go to hyperinflation. Like no, you, wait, 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 because you can't, it's not free floated. We, you, it's not traded in that sense. It's traded. It's traded. No, the Chinese yen it's is two traded. Different, nobody wants to trade it. No, there is two different currencies. China actually have two currencies. One is actually traded outside. One no, is it's, it's not. It's not. It's the, the internal traded one is called CNY. The external traded one is yeah. CNH. The H stands for Hong Kong. It's so yeah. it's it's the same thing as the, the you if you have a, a bank account and you send your money of US dollar bank account into your brokerage account in US dollars, and then you buy euros, right? And you can't, that euro is not the same euro as the euro that you can use to spend. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I'm, the CNH. I'm saying, yeah. The, 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 the CNH the, because, is the thing that's used to trade. Because the remaining is controlled. Yeah. No, no. Yes, the the, the like currency that they allow to be free floated is free floated. Most of the currency within the country that is used. No, it, it cannot be tracked. No, not from outside. No, it's traded. So, it's traded. It's tracked. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, I, I'm, I'm okay. The, so that's my that's my observation. At least, okay, I put it that way. Okay. it's easier to understand because when because these people need if if so called the the money where you you can print yourself, you can pay. These people is essentially like slave. It's free labor. So oh. basically, the labor cost is technically free, except that you have to pay for their food, their transport, and everything. That that is the real cost that you have to pay. You have no choice. The the it, the salary wise, they pay them in. Yuan, it doesn't co contribute into the economy of outside. It's still within China, so you can do whatever yeah. you want within China. Yeah. Right? Correct. No, you, so you, you can't can do, do whatever what... you want. You, if you yeah. keep, if for a local currency, if you print too much of it, hyperinflation happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. But it's not going to pay, go into hyperinflation if you just print for a, a bunch of construction workers. No, but it doesn't mean currency. you can print whatever you want. It, it, no, because yeah, this you, is the same. It's, it's a trade. Every currency. The trade. You listen, but you, you can listen. make them. You can make them work for a subsistence wage because no, they're no. in a totalitarian society. Not just no, they're not. No, no. You, you, uh, you listen. It will never go into hyperinflation just because you pay for the construction worker because you're making money off this loan. You, you understand? You're doing this to and road. You are, you are loaning them money. They have to give you back this money on top of whatever that you are actually paying the workers. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what's that got to do with hyperinflation? If you get paid more it, money, you can't. It, there's more money supply. No, that even, don't say. That this entire project is, is business. It's, this entire Belt and Road project is a business. They have they can print money to pay the workers first. Basically, it's technically like free, but the it doesn't affect the economy because this country is going to pay you back free money essentially like free money and on top of that interest which is why with the whole sum of the project china actually makes money out of it yeah and th these yeah. workers are free essentially the only thing that china have no, to pay not. in real money in my term of real money which is us dollar is yeah. material yeah import costs or petrol the yeah. workers itself is essentially like free to china because you can print the money out yeah they're and free they're because the opportunity Basically, the opportunity cost of not sending them there is that you have an unemployed guy sitting in China that is going to yes. get you know, right. If you leave him there, it's worse. Yeah, correct. So that's the so opportunity cost. Two, so you it's soft two birds in one stone. Yes. So they still need. Okay. Uh, I okay. Need put to, it this way. Uh, how, how, how it looks looks like it's free to me. For example, if let's say I do a, a YouTube project and then I earn money from it, and then I know that I earn X amount of money, so I take half of it and I pay someone to do video editing. It's essentially, essentially free to me. You understand that, 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 what I mean? Yeah. No, I but can it's, it's, 
it, it's opportunity cost. It's it basically you're you're cutting into your margin so that somebody else mm. has to to yeah. To, but but to, you see, this is for but for so China. It's, it's more it's like, it's, okay. And it's only free to you as long as you make the money from YouTube, right? So if you don't make the money from YouTube, it ruins you. And I think for a country, for a country is different. For a country, right? You get the infrastructure, you get the relationship, the diplomacy, and then you get the people to work. The the upside is way more than the downside. So it's yeah. So essentially, it's free because you can print the money and solve the salary problem. It's not free. It's like okay, if 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 Russia wants to build this, they will pay a guy. A plat somewhere, a uh, hundred US dollars a month to go dig up some metals, and then pay another guy a hundred US dollars a month to make a chip. To pay another right. guy to put it all together. So the well, this, this is right, just vendor finance, finance, right? This is vendor uh, finance. We're t- we're talking about vendor finance. This is like when a, a hi-fi shop sells you a stereo and and gives you the money to buy it, and you pay it off gradually, right? It's it's a good way of generating business yeah. as long as they uh, not, pay back the, exactly. as long as they pay it off, right? Because no, if you do exactly. too much vendor finance and people just don't pay you, right? The it, it, thing no, it, falls it, over. It, it, uh, it's it's more of like okay, so 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 like okay, let's take the Russia example, right? Russia uh, can hire three guys. One guy digs up the metal. One guy makes the chip. One guy puts it together and makes a missile. And so it costs maybe ten thousand dollars for Russia to do that. Russia can then turn around and sell that missile for a million dollars. So, so you see, so the loan for China, they can they can loan it for a billion dollars, but it only costs them ten thousand dollars to do it. It's not free, but it's very very much cheaper. They're paying cost price to build the thing. So they they have a huge margin there. So and same on thing top with of that, the missile there's a huge muscle. Correct. There's a huge which is why Belt and Road is a genius it's idea. No, it's, it's a genius, genius idea, idea, but it's, it's for a genius the idea. interest of the uh, the because Chinese Chinese, it helps Chinese uh, people because. Because right, you no, know, we do not know. I, I, for for me, like, I, we do not know what China do, which is why you know, like, they maybe they 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 purposely devalue their currencies and whatever not. But all this devaluation, all this printing of money, you need to pay back, which is why the Belt and Road is the perfect project, perfect way to get all this money to share you share your debt outside, push your debt outside, so that you can pay back all your stuff. Which this is how I look at Belt and Road because it's Isn't a that really like what the US way. did. Sorry. I think it's in a bit similar to the US in the sense that they're I think gonna... US is a bit different because they can print money freely, right? China cannot. So China yeah. have to find a way to push this debt outwards. And this belt and road, when they exchange, right, when in a, in a single hand, this single signature, they can literally just push one big chunk of debt to a different country. And they don't need to deal so, with it anymore. So so to, to answer coping things, a uh, uh, previous uh, assertion, a uh, question of why why China does it like this versus the, the difference between the U.S. is it, it, you have to understand the interest of China is very different from the U.S. Ch- China doesn't that doesn't care. Okay, China has always cared about itself and its own people. They, they are very yeah. inward looking. They don't care about anybody else. All of us are not China. To them, we are basically not China. So they don't, they don't care whether you are run by a dictatorship. They don't care if you are run. We are barbarians. You know, you are slaves. Mm. You are democracy. It's none of their business. They don't want it. They don't In other words, China it. is the world, and then you have the rest. Exactly. Yes. From their perspective, China is the world, and it's such a large country with so many people that it, it kind of makes sense. Most of the people just it, the world is yeah. China, right? China so in when Chinese. When you go to is... another country. To, 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 to do all these belt and road initiatives. They don't they are not there for the welfare of the people there. Yeah. They don't care if their it's other parties stuff. make sense or you well, know they just want to solve an uh, internal problem and also to get a chance of getting future foreign uh, currency uh, into China. That's all they're doing. Yeah. You know so, so that's uh, why their their loans are so differently structured from the US ones whereas US is trying to have political dominance and and, yes, and, and, you know, yes, and all those a, things. Yeah. The, uh, I was a little bit curious, like how does all this tie to uh, China having two currencies? Uh, because I, I suspect that having two currencies uh, has a little bit to do with the US dollar. Uh, no, there's no, something to do with okay. protection, as far as so, I understood. Drew, for Drew, there's currency. no two currency. For me, there's two, 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 there's two oh, currency. Okay. So uh, that's uh, the difference. Uh, yeah. So it, it's historically what happened is that China uh, a currency isn't is a free floated, right? So, uh, and then they created the CN, from Renminbi is the currency. Uh, then they created CNY, which is traded internally. 
Then after that, they wanted to create another currency, uh, which is uh, for it to be uh, freely, freely, free, uh, freely traded outside China. So they created the CNH, which is, stands for CN Hong Kong, right? But it, it's one CNH is equals to one CNY equals to one RMB. It's the it's same not. currency. It's, it's not. It is. It's it not. is. It's so, a different currency. If you go and look at no. the, you go and Google right now, it's actually uh -huh. a different valuation. The different yes. valuation of okay. The two why is why different. is it a different valuation? Is what I mentioned it. before. Every single uh, it's the same with every single currency around the world. Uh, currency exchanges uh, there's no there's no central currency exchange. Every currency exchange around the world is its own little kingdom, its own little universe. So when the CNH is traded outside of China over the various current exchanges, the the value of the CNH to the USD among each exchange is different. And the, all those values are different from the amount that's traded inside CNY. But there are arbitration traders that push the value together over time. So if there is a huge uh, correct, correct. change, if there's a huge change, for example, then you'll see that the spread between CNY and CNH was large. But over time, they'll come together. Uh, same I, thing I, I, if, I think I put it yeah. wrongly. It's the, the R1 is to 1. When you bring yes. the money that you exchange in Hong Kong into China, it's 1 is to 1. But yes. when you actually want to buy and sell, it's different. 